Hi guys, I'm back. Welcome to my channel. It's called The Stitch Too Far. My name is Ingeborg. Um, I'm a bit out of practice <laughs> because the last time I did a video was I think a month ago by now. It's the end of, no, it's not the end of May. It's the start of June. Yeah. Um, I've been on vacation, I've been to the New Jersey retreat, and this video will be all about that. I won't do any regular update, I'll save that for the next video. Um, I've got a whole pile of things over here. I have no notes, uh, I did some vlogging twice. <laughs> So I don't know, I might pick some things out of that to if I forget something, if I forget something, but I really want to do minimal editing for this. So I'm sorry about that. I feel we're hoping for more. Um, I had a absolutely fabulous vacation. New York was beautiful. Boston is beautiful. The retreat was amazing. My stay with Amanda was amazing. Yeah, it felt like four different trips all poured into one, uh, which was kind of odd transitioning every time. But yeah, I had a great time. Um, I'm still a bit jet lagged. <laughs> I came home on Tuesday morning and I started working again on Wednesday uh, for the full week and on Saturday my body told me I needed some sleep <laughs> because I haven't slept in until noon for since I was a student I think <laughs> so yeah um, still a bit jet lagged but we're gonna go for it because I don't want to wait any longer with making this video because the retreat is already two weeks ago and many people have already put up their videos um, so I'm not going to share everything that was in the, the swag bag but I will share a few things um, and I'm trying to figure out where to start <laughs> So I guess I'm just going to go chronological. Um, I flew into New York on the Saturday before the retreat. So I had a full, I arrived at my apartment. I had an Airbnb uh, on Saturday evening. So I had a full four days of exploring New York, which was great. Uh, the weather wasn't that great, but uh, yeah, for, for museum trips, it was fine. So I visited a few museums, including the Metropolitan uh, on Fifth Avenue and the Cloisters. I know the Cloisters is a bit out of the way for a lot of people who come to Manhattan. But if you're a stitcher, I would definitely recommend going there because uh, that is where you find these. It's a series of tapestries featuring a unicorn. They don't know the exact origin story behind it. They don't know exactly who commissioned them, but they are in very good condition and they are absolutely stunning. This is still wrapped, so I'm not gonna share more than that, but you might recognize this. Uh, this is a very famous picture of it. But yeah, th those are in the cloister, so that's a bit out of the way. It's north of, in the north of Manhattan, but I was staying in Harlem, so for me it was, I think it might have been a 20 minute trip. So yeah, I did that and I went to the Met Fifth Avenue where I met Diana. It is Kismet, which was amazing. <laughs> um, she's as lovely in real life as she is on her channel. Uh, if you haven't watched any of her videos, please check out the link below. Um, so yeah, we explored the Metropolitan and oh my God, I underestimated how big that is. Uh, if you would, if you love art and culture and, and museums, you have to go to the Met and uh, you probably need five days to see everything. 
and by day number one I was already overdosing <laughs> on all the art but oh my gosh we had such a blast I saw a bit of the impressionist gallery and we explored the uh, European art so we saw all the Dutch and Flemish and Italian uh, and El Greco and, and it, too many to name artists Rembrandt um, uh, I would say Rembrandt and Frans Hals and Van, Van Dijk and uh, I think there were Rubens but I'm not sure uh, I'm getting an all a big mix up with the Boston Fine Art Museum now but yeah that was amazing their Egyptian art was excellent the thing is with the mat is that um, you walk into the gallery and usually in the museum there's maybe two or three really excellent pictures in there and the rest are really nice but more of a filler <laughs> not to be condescending but yeah that's usually how museums work they don't have all the money to buy all the good stuff but apparently the mat does because you walk into one room and everything there is a masterpiece everything there is a masterpiece and then you walk into the next room and everything there is a masterpiece and then you walk into the next room and everything there is a masterpiece and there's room after room after room after room after room because it's huge and that's why I had a bit of an overdose <laughs> and I, I kind of went insane and wanted to cry and laugh at the same time and just was confused by the end of the day <laughs> And I really needed to talk to my countrymen about why they sold off all our masterpieces to foreigners. But yeah, that's another subject. <laughs> anyway, so that was the Met. Uh, what else did I do? Oh yeah, I, wa I went to some smaller museums, which were a bit more random. Uh, uh, I have to look up the names, but yeah. They were nice, but I was hoping to find some needle art there and they were not on display, so tough luck. And I, of course, walked through the Central Park a few times and I went to the Statue of Liberty and Ellis Island, which was on the day that we had really nice weather, except by the end, but then I was already home. Unfortunately, Diana was not, but you have to check out her video for that. Um, yeah, that was wonderful. Uh, I have been to the Statue of Liberty before. When I last was in New York, that was about 30 years ago. <laughs> um, so Ellis Island Museum wasn't a thing back then. So that was new for me and that was wonderful. I have family who went through the immigration process. So it was nice to see what they went through and hear, learn about all, what was involved back then and just see the building and be in it and yeah that was wonderful definitely recommend going there and also the statue of liberty um it had been a while since i was there but it is really impressive it's wonderful to see and i recommend going on a good day when it's not foggy if if it, if at all possible because it's wonderful to see it coming uh, uh, from the distance to watch you on the ferry and yes I went on the ferry it wasn't as bad as I was dreading it would be for me because it's not a, that big of a boat and I could be on the deck so I was fine uh, yeah I think that encapsulates about what I did I walked around the area where my uh, Airbnb was for a bit which was nice just to get a feel for the neighborhood um that's about it i think it was time to head to new jersey i will try and see if i am awake enough to insert some pictures of new york for you here
But yeah, so the next uh, step in the voyage was uh, New Jersey retreat. I left, uh, I went there on Thursday. Uh, I had to check out of my place in the morning. So I just took my leisurely time and headed out with the train, which went perfectly well. No problems there. I took a taxi to the hotel, which was only a five minute drive through a cemetery. Something I learned, apparently you have drive through cemeteries in, in America. That's not common in my country. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, arrived at the hotel, I checked, I could check in already, which was nice. And then when I came back downstairs, I met the first stitcher, which was Brenda, I think. And her lovely boyfriend, who I need to thank for paying for my drinks, I think. I wasn't aware he did that. And I'm sorry that I didn't thank you in person. But yeah, thank you. Uh, we had a lovely chat. And then slowly more stitches came in. I think Debbie and Donna arrived. And Diana arrived. And uh, Laurie arrived. And then... Kenna was there and then I sort of lost count <laughs> of people arriving we had something to eat and then we went off to the uh, store on Thursday afternoon just to have a look well I, I was there mainly to have a look because I knew I would be overwhelmed if, in the first visit so I just decided to just scope out the store and see what they had and see if there's anything there I would want to come back for or have another look at. And uh, I did and uh, I put, I had some things put aside for me for the next day to, because I wanted to think about uh, some of them because they were not all cheap. <laughs> but yeah, it was lovely. It's a great store. It has a very well set up selection of threads of fabrics of course hand dyed fabrics and regular fabrics it has a good selection of patterns it had quite a few trunk shows which was very enabling and um, it had a, a, a wide variety of stitches it had a lot of cross stitch but it also had hardanger and drawn thread and needlepoint canvas work so yeah uh, i bought a lot of stuff but i didn't buy until the friday and then i had to go back on saturday because i saw some things other people got that i needed to have so and i i forgot some things that i wanted to look for so i went back on saturday so i had in all three runs of the store and bought some things but I did not do that bad no considering where I was and what I could have spent I did I did pretty well so um, let's talk about some of the goodies we got and let's talk about some of the stitching I did and let's talk about the purchasing I did because I think we're at that point in the story that it's time to do that and let's see so um, I guess we can start with the stitching um, I took a lot of projects <laughs> which I knew was optimistic but yeah it fitted in my suitcase and I figured who knows what I'm feeling like so in the end I worked on three projects and I, I basically started started them all at the retreat or, or just before um, having a look to see what's what um, yes so oh there's a moth in there which is not good luckily everything is wrapped okay Weird. So, uh, in New York, I started this black work piece, which I will link below. It's an Etsy store, and I always forget the name because it's not on here. But I will link this below. Uh, it's a lovely piece, and I got quite a long way on that. 
Uh, I'm working on some Summer Sky Jobelin in 28 counts. I'm trying to see, this is the, okay, this is the front. <laughs> Let's not repeat that mistake. Uh, so yeah, I got to the top of the statue, well almost to the top of the statue. As you can see, I finished the bottom pedestal and I'm working on the outline of the statue. And having a lot of fun with that. Uh, but I stopped working on that at retreat because it was a bit fiddly and I needed to concentrate and I couldn't. So yeah, I'm, I'm using my LNS Dill color for that. Again, like I did in Austin piece. Lovely color. And yeah, really enjoying this. I need to pick it up again and finish it so that I can make a commemorative piece out of it. Uh, yeah. Uh, then another thing I started at retreat, I think. Yes, I know at retreat. Is a piece, uh, a canvas work piece that Arlene designed. Uh, sorry about this. Uh, canvas work square number two. I already did number one. This is uh, from Arlene. Works by ABC. It's her Etsy shop. I will link it below. And well, I, I, I have been working on it since because I have been working on it today and yesterday. Uh, but uh, here is my progress. I'm almost done. Uh, at uh, retreat, I did all the inner diamonds, all everything in there. I finished at retreat, retreat, and the rest I did at home. But yeah, it's a lot of fun to work on, and I I'm using the new uh, DMC colors for that. But I did make one change. So I'm using for the darker purple, I'm using 32, and the lighter purple is 30. They are lovely colors. I like these purples. Uh, they're more blue toned purples. Lavender colors. And originally I was using number one for the contrasting color, but it's I found out it's too light. Uh, on the white canvas I, I, am, I had trouble seeing what I was doing. Uh, because for a lot of the contrasting colors you only use one thread. So I went a few shades darker and now I'm using a number three gray, which as you can see is a lot darker and it shows up a lot better because I actually had to... Um, Arlene uh, warned me about starting this because it's a bit tricky with counting, especially those two inner things. And swirly things um, and I think because she warned me I really took care in counting and I didn't make any mistakes so that was hooray but then on the on this border I don't know if you can see it but that's the dark gray and with the light gray I, I somehow I made a counting error here and I had to frog it and then I decided to stop <laughs> and try again when I got home so I had to frog that out and do the dark gray instead. But yeah, I am having a ball with this. Oh yeah, this is the this is the needle minder from the retreat that I put on here. Oh, which I love. And yeah. I started that and I worked on that for a bit. And then I think in Vermont with Amanda I started working on the second piece of my scissor fog that I'm stitching with Francis from My Little Stitchy World uh, is this scissor fob. Uh, I think I started it in Vermont, but I might have on at retreat already. But I already did the blue and I'm working on this one now, the white one. So I didn't get very far. This is all I did. So just a little start on that. But I want to get this finished this year so that I can finish the scissor fob. Okay, so that's all the stitching I did. So considering I brought a lot more with me, 
which I knew was unrealistic and uh, I might have left one bag at home if I had been smarter about it but I didn't so yeah next time next time I'll definitely only take two bags with me okay so uh, some of the retreat goodies that I wanted to share is this lovely mug which is very handy it's perfect for stitchers because you can close it although I did find it leaks a bit so if it falls over you make you better make sure that you're on top of it and then uh, we got this lovely bag and somehow Emma's in here um, oh yeah and I wanted to share some things about this because first of all love this and I want to start it so yeah I got a whole pile of things I want to start now and I, I'm not going to show all the goodies but I do want to mention uh, the, the shops that, uh, and, and companies that have actually donated stuff because I think that's important so Needle Workers Delight, if you are ever in the neighborhood in New Jersey, please go check them out because they are amazing. Service is beyond belief, it really is. They offer to ship for free, even to me, which is amazing, but I couldn't, couldn't do it because I just, <laughs> that would have been silly and expensive for them. Um, uh, so, Krynik did a donation, uh, Weeks Dye Works did a donation, Karen Collection did a donation, Rainbow Gallery did a donation, and Gentle Arts, which amazing, love it. So yeah, thank you to all those companies. And of course, we have the Sexy Knitter. I'm trying to figure out how to do this because uh, she is on Etsy the sexy knitter just uh, all uh, on one she provided a coupon code which i am not sure if it's wise to share on the internet so um, but yeah and i just wanted to show which what colors i got for the everyone got a card of rainbow gallery some kind of red i got this very velvet which is uh, like a thick cord i don't know if you can see uh, lovely and soft, which I will find to use for in some of the, my canvas work. And I got a beautiful skein of watercolors, I think they're called. And I actually have this color as well, so it will definitely come in handy. Uh, so yeah, those were the things I wanted to show that are different from other people's stuff. And... Yeah... I'm getting, the pile is getting smaller. So, um, I picked this up from the freebie table and I'm honestly, I can't remember that I actually did that. So, but yeah, I know why I did it because of the back and the shells, I think, and the front and the shells. But yeah, I picked this up. I didn't pick up anything else because I knew I would need all the luggage space that I would need <laughs> for everything else. And then, oh yeah, before I forget, I brought this along, my clamp, and somebody gave me the best tip ever. Which is uh, normally uh, you would have the clamp like this, so with this on the bottom and this on the top. And this is the table and somebody uh, a few people actually pointed out that if i leave this at the bottom i will uh, hit my knees against this all the time so they suggested to just do this and this and then it's on the top so where you can reach it easily on the top of the table and it's not in the way because everything here is free so yeah excellent tip thank you very much i really i have used this quite a few times on my trip well three times <laughs> because I did that much stitching but yeah uh, yeah 
definitely can recommend this. In my previous video I left a link, I will try and link it again. I couldn't find it anymore on the Dutch side, but it is still available in the UK. LBC table clamp. Love it. Uh, so yeah. I haven't got any coffee. <laughs> this is a bit annoying. But I do have a big ass mug. <laughs> uh, it was my birthday on the first day of the retreat and some people actually got me gifts which was kind of sort of embarrassing for me because I didn't really mean to have that thing be a thing but yeah. Olivia from the Bee Sisters, Olivia B, if you don't watch her please check out the link below. Um, I, I, I'm, I sort of almost challenged her to get me a bigger mug than the one I got from uh, Nolene from Qatar. And she kind of took it seriously <laughs> and sent that mug to Emily C to take with me, to take with her to give to me as a birthday gift, which was amazing. And thank you very much, Olivia. You, I, <laughs> no words. I had to laugh about that a lot, but yeah, yeah. Thank you. Um, and she wasn't the only one who got me birthday gifts. Uh, thank you everyone on Instagram who uh, congratulated me and on, on one of my videos as well, I think. Thank you very much for the birthday wishes and special thank you to Glenn for singing to me. <laughs> that was wonderful. Um, yeah, so. Um, my roomie, Amanda, got me a wonderful card and made me this. Look at this. She finished it all herself and I think it's gorgeous and perfect and I love it. And it will go on my stand and has a lovely bag. A great friend is a blessing in time. Oh my gosh, I love that. So that is going on a place of honor on my table. Then uh, Lori at Mischievous Stitches gave me a great card. And all the new flosses. Thank you very much. And one of those handy unpicking things. Yeah, we call them a tornesje. Um, Thank you, I needed one because my one was broken and I will definitely try this out and see if I like it. Thank you. Oh, and uh, some candy which I already ate. And then there were some people who were very kind to me and uh, one of them was uh, Leslie, who is a mini gnome on Instagram. Uh, you can't really see it, but those letters are really sparkly. And she added these thread keeps in there. Aren't they pretty? Oh my gosh. Thank you very much, Leslie. Um, and last but not least, no, no, not last but not least, Lori, the other Lori, Lori S. She Cologne, who is. Oh, dang, what's just. Uh, I will link your... Oh, Once Upon a Stitch. Thank you for editing it in the card. <laughs> she has a Flossop channel too, Once Upon a Stitch. And she gave me these beautiful wildflowers. In beautiful lavender colors. Thank you so much. That was really, really sweet of you. And then... My girl Diana made me a bag. And I love it. Oh my God, I love it. And she added some tags and some bags because she's, and she, she showed these on one of her videos and I commented that I thought they were amazing. And she said Amazon and she's like, I'll bring you some when we meet. And I was like, nah, don't be silly. But she did. Look at these, aren't they useful? 
I got a whole bunch. Yeah. So thank you very much, Diana. You are the sweetest person ever. And I love the bag. Yeah. Love it. Um, but that was not all because Lisa, who doesn't make floss soup, but is on YouTube as LDR Stitcher and was at our retreat. Oh yeah, I forgot about those. Jeez. There's no end to this. Uh, she was with me when we were shopping on Thursday and I had, I had put this aside because I wanted to think about it. And she got it for me for my birthday. It's a scissor fob. With a beautiful, I don't know what the English, what do you call it, the bird of paradise uh, flower. Uh, I don't know what it's called in English. Oh, Bird of Paradise, duh. <laughs> it says so over here. Uh, it's by the Hearts Content. She had a beautiful uh, trunk show with lots of lots of beautiful miniatures, but the ones I wanted besides this were not in stock. So I'm gonna have to keep an eye out for that. And the thing is, it comes as a kit. So it has everything. So it has the fabrics, the flosses and the scissor. So thank you very much, Lisa. That was immensely kind of you. I love it. So I need to start stitching that too. I want to start stitching that too. And then there was even more. So you see, I got, I was a bit flustered with all the kindness, yeah, honestly, because Crafty Kim from Canada made me a card amazing card that she made herself because i don't know if you don't watch her go watch her i'll add a link um uh, a while back she wanted to to make her first little pillow and she had a bit of a mishap with uh, ironing on the interfacing so she turned it into a card for me i love it Thank you very much, Kim. And not only that, if you watch her, you know that she made this Biscorno recently, her second one ever. And it's my birthday gift. Oh my God, I love it. I really, really, really love it. Thank you so much, Kim. It's got your hair on it, maybe? <laughs> my hair? I don't know. Yeah, look at that. Gorgeous. Oh. Um... There were some more goodies that we got that I forgot to show because I think it was Barbara who made everyone a scissor fob. And Barbara, I don't know if you watch my show or uh, if, the, if it's not Barbara, whoever it was who made this. If you watch my channel, please leave a comment below because I would really like to thank you in person. I didn't get to do that. Love this. And Lori Chicolone also gave everyone finishing materials. Love that. And Gia, I don't think she has a, a channel. I need to check that. But we were talking and she was showing off some of her work and it was on her own hand dyed fabric and she had a piece and she said, you want it? I'm like, Sure, thank you. So she gave me one of her little hand dyed pieces, which I love and I need to check the count because I might stitch the retreat pattern on here. Absolutely love it, thank you very much. So I think, I think that's all the gifts. And I was blown away by that. Thank you, thank you again, everyone. Uh, yeah. I'm not good at, at getting gifts. <laughs> I can tend to get embarrassed. But yeah, I love it. Thank you so much. Um, so now there's actually, I, I actually spent some money too. Uh, but before I, I show you that, let's just finish my story about retreat and 
uh, after retreat <laughs> because uh, as you might see Jim contacted me about doing a video so we did that as well uh, during retreat we had a blast with uh, I had such a great time uh, talking to everybody that I could get to I know uh, uh, because people would go into the shop in groups or go out to eat in groups or go to Hobby Lobby or whatever in groups uh, there were rare times when everybody was at the same place at the same time so I did uh, not get to spend uh, all the time I wanted with everyone who was there I do apologize for that if you really, really uh, but I told you in advance if you really wanted to talk to me better approach me which a lot of people did which I thought was lovely thank you for doing that and also I forgot to take a lot of selfies that I are uh, but I did take some and I did take some pictures and I did shoot some videos which I will try and insert here You have to like take a train somewhere where you can take the light rail <laughs> to Liberty State Park. Unless you take a train to New York and then you still have to take a train to get to Battery Park. So it's going to be involved and you use she up the whole thing. She looks like a little old lady. There's just no <laughs> way to do it in her entire time. <laughs> <laughs> Stunning. And I love the variety of everything. Mm -hmm. Did you bring any? I did. I brought, oh, my, I works. Thought maybe I that brought my works that I thought people would want to see, but I yeah. didn't bring finished. I should have. <laughs> Arlene's. That's one that you got like five ribbons for or something. Is it gold? Yeah, I think so, yeah. Is that her own design up here? It's gorgeous.
Uh, just to give you a general feel for what it was like. Um, but yeah, and I'm de definitely contemplating getting a Facebook account just to get to the pictures that everybody else is sharing on Facebook <laughs> and to get onto the Chatelaine website. So yeah, um, you might see me on Facebook in the near future. Who knows? Um, but yeah, a uh, big, big, big thank you again to Arlene and McKenna for organizing this. You put a lot of work into this and it shows. Uh, thank you for that. Um, and it was lovely meeting everyone that I did get a chance to meet. And I am definitely considering doing this again. But my budget doesn't look like it will be this year. <laughs> So I was looking into maybe going to the Washington DC retreat that Stefan is organizing, but I did look at the flight and the flights are pretty expensive at the moment. So maybe next year, but also I would love to go out to the West coast and see some of the stitches there because I need to bring Olivia something like the biggest cheese in the world or something. I don't know. <laughs> but yeah. Um, who knows what will happen. Uh, so yeah, that's, uh, I think that's all I'm going to say about retreat. Pfft. Yeah, I had a lot of fun sharing it on Instagram and I, I, I really enjoyed everybody's comments on those. And uh, I think uh, everybody appreciated the sharing. So yeah. And can't wait for StitchCon and, and, and do my own little version of Wish I Was There <laughs> uh, to see everybody was there. Um, yeah, yeah, many people have said this before and I think Emily recently said it very well. If you manage to get to retreat or if you have the opportunity, absolutely go. Even if you don't know anybody, you'll make friends for life. Uh, if there's no opportunity in your area, um, consider just starting small and see if you can hook up with Facebook or Instagram people in your area or put a sign up in your local library or your local supermarket that you're looking for stitches to start a stitch along or a stitch group with. Who knows? Things can happen. Um, so yeah. Uh, after retreat, uh, which was hard saying goodbye and I cried. Yes, I did. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> Amanda and I left for her place in Vermont, which was an absolute delight and just what we needed after such a, uh, uh, for me, it was a whole week for her. It was a weekend of all the things and all the impressions and all the people and all the, all the goings on to come down from that in her place in close to the middle of nowhere <laughs> was absolutely perfect and we had a great time her family is lovely I got a, got a chance to uh, meet her husband and her beautiful baby boy and her gr grandfather I'm saying that right yes I'm saying that right and I got to see where they make their syrup their maple syrup and her house is absolutely gorgeous and they're still working on it but it will be perfect and uh, we had a lovely walk and we had lovely dinners and we had just a relaxing time there which was perfect and then 
On Wednesday, uh, we headed up to Boston. Um, we dropped off the Robin at her mom's place and uh, we stopped at a local shop and I will insert the name here because it was a wonderful shop. Uh, it had lots of needlework stuff in general, so it also had some knitting stuff and some canvas work stuff and some needlepoint stuff and great selection of cross stitch patterns and lots of threads. So we spent some time there shopping and I was good. I mainly kitted up some stuff that I needed for my canvas work pieces and that I thought I might have a trouble with getting over here or that might be expensive over here. So yeah, I had a lovely time in the shop and then went uh, to Boston, dropped my stuff off at my place that I got and walked to the Museum of Fine Arts and spent a few hours there together watching or looking at all the beautiful paintings. That was amazing and then it was time to say goodbye which was hard so yeah thanks again amanda i had a lovely time i will try and insert some pictures uh, here And uh, then I was in Boston by myself and uh, yeah, that was hard, but uh, I sort of dived straight into the sightseeing or dove straight into sightseeing. And I can say Boston is wonderful. If you get a chance, go there because it's, It felt a lot more relaxed. Uh, it had a bit of a European feel to it and that may be because there's a lot of old style buildings, brick buildings, uh, sandstone buildings there that are similar to what we see in Europe and um, it has so much history. It was really interesting. I did the Freedom Trail. I walked the Freedom Trail. I visited some of the places. Um, uh, some of the cemeteries. Oh, and now I know why uh, you have those uh, cross stitch patterns with those uh, tombstones with the angels on top or the skulls on tops. I just thought they were imagination, but they're actually the style of the day in your area, apparently, because uh, I have never seen those in Europe, but I saw them all over the Boston Cemetery. Uh, so yeah, uh went up to Bunker Hill and had a great explanation by a park ranger about what happened there. That was awesome. Um, what else? Visited a lot of museums, including the Isabella Stewart Gardner and the Museum of Fine Arts. I did a second run of that. Uh, oh, I went to Salem for the day. Uh, the, the Peabody Museum is very very good. Uh, I did walk around a bit, but it felt a bit of a tourist trap to me. Uh, it was fun to look around. I did we visit the memorial, which was impressive for the witch trials. But other than that, I kind of stayed away from the tourist trap places. Uh, so yeah, I took the train back at the end of the afternoon, I think. So yeah, I think that's, I, I wanted to go to Plymouth Plantation, but that would be a bit difficult. Uh, it would take too much time getting there and coming back with public transport. So yeah, I might have to come back for that someday. And then, yeah, I was ready to fly back and I got everything into my suitcase, which was a miracle. And which may be the reason that when I opened it, when I got home, I had this in my suitcase because apparently people at the Transportation Security Administration are stitchers and wanted to see what I got as well because they opened my baggage and had a look inside. I've, I've had that happen to me once before and that was when I had my 
geology hammer, which is a big iron hammer with a sharp end. In my backpack, and they opened that up to see what, what, what the hell that was. <laughs> but I've never had it since, so that was a bit of a surprise, but I hope they like my stash. Which I'm now going to share with you, because I went uh, to Needleworkers Delight uh, with the intention of mainly looking at their uh, fabrics and looking at things, uh, designers and patterns that might be hard to find in Europe or in the Netherlands. And thinking that I would mainly come back with lots of fabrics. Mm -mm. Uh, I, I, I had a really good look at the fabrics and I loved them. What I wasn't aware of was that there was the option of doing uh, overnight dyeing, which was a good thing that I didn't know that, and that there was actually a wall of uh, samples from every type of dye that they do. Because uh, at, the mo at the tables, the high count fabrics were all pretty much neutral fabrics. Which was which were beautiful, but I have a good s supply of that from X2 Designs already and from Pixelis Plus. So nothing much caught my fancy the first and the second time. And, then, and the third time I did buy two pieces. One piece that I had seen from the start and I thought if it's still there, I will have to pick it up. And then I actually for, found also a good pattern to go with it. So... What did I get? I got this, which is not showing up at all, but it is 46 count Bergen linen morning mist. And it looks uh, gray to me on the screen, but it's actually a light bluey gray, blue green, tealy. Very light uh, blue green color mottled. And I love it. And I didn't really know what to stitch on it. I couldn't, nothing came to mind from my stash. Uh, but then, let me see if I can find it. I saw something, something, and I hope it's in here. Oh, here. I saw this, which is the Barbara Anna Portuguese, uh, Portuguese bird sampler. And I thought that is perfect for that. And then Emily C said, yeah, that's, I'm doing that on similar color. I'm like, oh, okay, I channeled Emily C apparently. So yeah. Love this. I, of course, am not going to do the alphabet, uh, which might mean some fiddling, but I'll figure it out. But yeah, that's going to be going on there. And it's all DMC, so yay for that. And then I saw on the, I think this is a one-off. Yeah, solo dies. I saw this, uh, which showing up a bit brownish but it's more of a green green tint bluish greenish tint it's a solo dye it's a 40 count 12 by 16 i'm sure i can fit something on there and i like it yeah so i, I grabbed that i'm sure i can find something for that so that's all the fabric i got um And before I go on, there's two freebies that I got from Amanda. This actually I won in her giveaway. And I mainly, I said if uh, I, I, I might find a way to use the finishing stuff, because I do like that. I don't like the design, but I'm sure I'll find some use for it. And I found this in her pile of freebies that I really liked. It's fancy that to the South Pole number 142. Really like that. 
So yeah, um, those were two more freebies. Um, and then all the things I buy, uh, bought. Uh, let's do the boring stuff first. I got a whole bag of boring stuff, like uh, stretcher bars and Krynik and another snag nabbit and plus away bags and um, scissors that Jen recommended and I'm gonna try out and I got all kinds of stuff for my uh, canvas work that I thought I might not be able to find in other places or find for a decent price because Rainbow Gallery is a lot cheaper in America than over here uh, and Krynik is too but on the other hand Karen is a lot cheaper over here so uh, so yeah a big bag of all kinds of boring stuff and then a big pile of fun stuff because yeah um, I got I got about this on my first run and this in my second one and this is mainly uh, due to the trunk shows and going through a few bins which is always risky as you will see I found this heart in hand which I really like and it's only got a few colors and I'm just gonna kit it up with whatever I got I think but I love that um, then I got a few hands-on designs which are all coffee related of course a hug in a cup and it's 5 no it's 7 a.m. somewhere I'm gonna do something about the colors though because yeah not so sure about the colors this one rise and grind and I saw someone show me that they had their stitch dots for that but I don't think they had the pattern for it but yeah love it and of course I had to get number three in the elixir series I need a fairy coffee mother because I just finished part two and then there were several trunk shows featuring uh, silk gauze stitching that I absolutely loved. It was all so tiny and one of them was Erica Michaels and uh, just seeing the models it was amazing. They were gorgeous and made me buy two. So I got this one every moment. And it's glary, but yeah, you'll have to live with that. And it includes the silk gauze piece. And I got this one, and I think Glenn, you stitched this on regular fabric, but yeah. These three remain hope. So she has three, she has hope, uh, love, and faith, but hope is the one that called out to me. Hope adorns and cheers our way. I might just do hope without the saying below it, but we'll see when we get there. Then there were a bunch of Mirabilia patterns that I sort of browsed through and I don't think I've ever seen this one and I generally don't like her. Well, that's it's not my aesthetic to have lots of ladies on the wall, but this one is. This is English Roses. It's uh, by Nora Corbett in 1995, it's the copyright, so it's pretty old. I don't think I've seen it before and I do like it. I might stitch it, I might not. If I don't, I will. For that price, it was $11. I'm not going to leave it in the bin. Then I have seen this on, I think Deborah Fessler showed that she was working on this and I loved it and I went looking for it and couldn't find it. And then when we were having dinner, Jen showed it to me and I'm like, where did you find that? And she's like, it's in the store. I'm like, and, and I asked if there were more and she said, yeah, sure. So I went back for this. I love it. I absolutely love it. It's hard to see the pictures, man. I need to work on that, but it's by Linda Barry, Designs for Learning, Elizabethan Treasures. And it's a beautiful Hardanger 
drawn thread piece. Then there was a Jeanette Douglas trunk show. And as Michelle Bendy will know, I have made quite a big wish list of Jeanette Douglas pieces. On there was uh, this quilt box. She has it in two colorways and I love it. And I love that she has also these smalls to go with it. Yeah, love that. And the Vintage Birds, is, it has been, ever since it was released, it has been on my wish list. Love, 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 love this. Uh, I need to see on 36 count. Okay, so... Trying to, I'm, I'm trying to look for the what the model is stitched on, but I can't see it. If it's legacy, if it's stitched on 36 legacy, then it's still quite big. But again, I won't stitch the alphabet. So um, then this one, I love this one, and I'm gonna have to take this out. So potpourri of stitches. I love this. These colors are gorgeous. Jeanette Douglas and colors. Yep. And it came with thread pack and charms. Yay. So that was a bit pricey, but worth it. And then, let's see. I got into canvas work mode because those are hard to find. At least. I haven't found them a lot in Europe. So I got Laura J. Perrin. It's looking very purple in here, but it's supposed to be more blue and purple. So I'm hoping this is not going to turn out as purple as it is, but yeah. And I, I already ordered all the missing threads that I didn't get from the United States. Because that's how I roll. And this one I love. This is from Nancy's Needle. Woodland Star. I absolutely love this. Love those colors. And um, this is not a Laura J. Perrin Nordic panel. I love this too. So these are all canvas work. And I've kitted them all up well I have ordered the stuff to kit them all up so yeah and last but not least and then I can't believe I'm through it all in under an hour probably not with all the ad added footage but yeah of course I had to order some more from Arlene and these I already had planned to buy this is her canvas work square number three and this is her canvas work square number four and as you can see, it's a new design, new layout compared to her old. Her old style. Looks really nice. Um, and one thing I have been not sure about, but since I have made my own with corners now, I am. Uh, this one. Because yes, it's over one on high count. Oh, 32 count. Oh, I thought it was 40. Oh, that, that makes it a lot easier. But yeah, oh my gosh, I love this. It was there on display. And yeah. She's got quite a nice trunk show set up uh, now with a lot of models stitched already. So yeah. And those of you who are going to StitchCon, I think she has a trunk show prepared for that. So check her out and I will link her Etsy below of course um, so um, the Biscorna reminded me that I had made some gifts for a few people and that I think I made pictures of so those included my first ever Biscornu and my second ever, ever Biscornu and stitching on black 40 count fabric with metallic threads so yeah they were all a bit challenging <laughs> <laughs> but I really did enjoy making them and 
I'm, I'm glad that uh, the people who received them were pleased with them as well. So I'm going to look and see if I can find some pictures of that and insert them here. And that is all I can say uh, about my trip, except for the fact that I know a lot of, uh, a few people have contacted me through private messaging mostly to say if I was in the area and I had some time and uh, uh, could I maybe let them know and they will come pick me up or they will want to talk to me. Uh, yeah, I didn't have time. I'm sorry. Um, Maybe next time, maybe not, I don't know, but yeah, thank you again, at least for offering. But yeah, it was, you know, how it goes with trips and holidays and yeah. Um, but yeah, all in all, I had the best trip ever. Um, it's been a while since that I've been out on my own and it all went very smoothly. This was the first time I used Airbnb, I can definitely recommend that. That was really nice to have uh, a place with an own kitchen and a microwave and coffee maker. Um, uh, yeah, it was easy to travel. Um, yeah, I didn't have any issues at all. Well, I, well with my credit card, but that's my bank's uh, problem. Um, so, now I can sort of put away my stash and try and see if I can finish the canvas work and try and see if I can edit this video. Uh, yeah, and get another cup of coffee because now I need one. I hope you are all doing well. I know uh, some of us are struggling with illness or other issues and... I'm thinking of you um, and I hope to see you. I uh, might do a regular update in a week because I try to stay away from the first and the last weekend of the month, but might also be three weeks. I don't know. It depends on how much I have to share <laughs> or I might just do a quickie next week. I don't know. Uh, anyway. I hope I didn't forget to say or thank anybody in particular um, and yeah, hope you had fun with this video and I had fun with this vacation and now I'm blabbering. Okay, bye guys.